Will the $18,000 mystery damage 981 boxer start in three, two, one? Boom, we're back ladies and gentlemen. New day, new car reveal. We got the 981 Porsche Boxster here with literally mystery unknown damage. For some reason, this car was sent to salvage auction even though it has a clean title. Where it got sold to the highest bidder. This guy right here. Either I'm the biggest idiot or I'm the only one willing to take a risk on this thing. But how can you pass it up? It was only $18,000. That was the final winning bid. Maybe 18,000 and change or something. I'll put it up here. And it only has 18,000 miles. Okay, do the math with me here. 18,000 miles, clean title, 2013 Boxster with some nice options. Hmm, that on the market, correct me if I'm wrong, would probably be worth 40 to $45,000 and I got it for 18K. Something's gotta be wrong with it, but I don't know what it is. Not even Copart knew what was wrong with it because under damage, they put nothing or minor dents and scratches, which is their default when there is no damage. So clearly you can see there's no body damage, no crash damage, no suspension damage. All the wheels and tires look good. All the brakes are there. The exhaust is here. What are those rocks? What the heck? Okay, the exhaust, okay, the exhaust is here, but it's full of what the heck? Okay, I've never seen this before on a car that wasn't like crashed off road. I don't know why there are a ton of rocks in the exhaust. Well, that's that's not a good sign. So actually now I am concerned that it did go off roading, but normally the rest of the car would be like damaged, the front bumper would be chewed up. Did this thing go off roading? Tell me there's rocks in the exhaust. What did you buy this piece of crap for? This I, is clearly not a winner. Uh, well, we're about to find out. Uh, I'm not. I'm not thrilled about the rocks and the exhaust, but the rest of the car, as you guys can see, looks pretty good. Now I'm pretty worried that there is some undercarriage damage. We mentioned in the last video, which you guys really wanted to know more about this, but I, it was all about the 924 and I ran out of time to film with this car. I just figured I'd make it its own video. I mentioned that when we were taking off the truck, the truck driver noticed two things. He told us, hey, just so you guys know, when I got this thing off the truck, the car below it was covered in oil. This thing was leaking from on top of the other car. So clearly we know that there is some sort of an oil leak coming from somewhere. Not good, not good at all. And also while it was up on the truck, I could see a little bit of the undercarriage and on the floorboard area, it looks like there is some damage. Leaking a bunch of oil and damaged floorboard. And rocks in the exhaust. And rocks in the exhaust. That's all we know so far. This is truly mystery unknown damage. And here he is detailing it. Like, really? Dude, if you want this thing to start, it's gotta be clean. Oh my gosh. All right, he loves getting all the. Rid its past. Yeah, he loves getting all the auction markings off of it. This is true, fresh out of the auction, straight out the salvage auction, even though it doesn't have a salvage title. Um, so let's take a look at the interior. Before we jack it up and see what's going on underneath it, let's show you more of the good stuff. So it's got a great interior. Before we can get to what could be absolute carnage on the undercarriage of this car, let's take a look at more of the good. So it's got this beautiful interior. It's got the upgraded steering wheel with the paddle shifters, not the ugly media wheel, which I hate. Clearly, there we go, 18,000 miles, I'm not lying which is crazy for a 2013. So in nine years, it only went 18,000 miles. That's 2,000 miles per year. Really, really nice in here. The seat's beautiful condition. I mean, 18,000 miles, what do you expect? It doesn't have anything crazy in the way of options. You know, it's it's just a base Boxster, so it's not a GTS, S, anything crazy, but this is still a very respectable car. It smells great in here, Bose sound system. Okay, so everything's pretty nice. Just needs a cleaning. You can tell the guys at the auction, you know, they're usually a little dirty getting in and out of here, so that's pretty normal. So it'll need a deep cleaning, but that is the easy part. Fixing whatever sent this thing to auction is going to be the, I assume, more difficult part. All right, let's check the back. Oh, good. Are, do we have the floor mats? Because they're missing inside. Well, we got one here. Oh, we got the other one too. All right, that's nice. Oh, shoot. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. What? Uh, there's a note that was left in here. So... That's never a good sign. You don't ever want to buy a car from auction with a piece of paper saying no starting there. Why do they put it in the trunk? Normally they write it on the windshield with paint pen saying no oil in it, don't start it, or... Why else would you not want to start a car? Because this oil leak that the trucker said, oh my gosh, yeah, normally they put it on the window. Even if that was up on the dash, that would I could have zoomed in and saw that in the pictures. But the fact that it was in the trunk, they don't show the trunk. Oh, oh. 
gosh, this is not a good sign. Oh, okay. Okay, this is probably uh, confirming the fact that something is seriously wrong with this engine, but how can an engine blow up at only 18,000 miles? Like, it's one thing if it's an early boxer with a ton of miles and the IMS bearing went, okay, maybe. This is like the new engine boxer, these don't have that issue. 18,000 miles, there's no way it could blow up in that time period. We're about to either see a hole out the block or I don't know, an oil line that got busted or something, not sure. Pretty good up here, let's get to the battery if possible. Throw it on the charger because hopefully we can go for a first start later. See if this thing blows up or not. Okay, I love how we're delaying the inevitable here. Christian's like, vacuum it first. You know, yeah, okay, sure. The car will totally know if we're giving it love that it will return love to us and not be blown up or something. I'm not feeling good about this one. <laughs> This might be our first like ever mega, mega loss. But then again at 18,000 bucks with a little fees and shipping, even if we did have to put a motor in it, these motors are pretty cheap on eBay. I still think we might be all right. Has AZ Cycle Parts parted out any 981s? Yeah, they do do a lot of these cars. Mark probably maybe has an engine if we need it, but I'm not even gonna speak that into existence. This car does not need an engine. It's gonna start right up and it's gonna run great. And we're gonna make $20,000 profit flipping it. Okay, I doubt it, but let's try it. <laughs> Okay, moment of truth. Got the jacks here to go underneath this car. At least for the time being, we have a now perfectly vacuumed clean car. So now that we gave you some love, Boxster, you show us some love back and don't have a blown up engine, please. Deal? Okay, cool, all right. Now, let's get under this thing. It was in the middle on the passenger side floorboard, which is not the engine, so I was like, okay, well if that's the only undercarriage damage, then like, this really isn't that bad. There's the, there's the damage that I saw. What the heck? Guys, do you see that? What is going on? It looks like somebody got angry in the passenger seat and like kicked the floorboard with high heels and it punched a hole out of it. Like normally undercarriage damage would go the other way, you know, like puncture up into the floorboard. Yet this comes out. So I don't know what happened here. If you happen to be the previous owner, hit us up. It's like Wolverine or something just like sliced the hole in the floorboard. Uh, but again, if that's the only undercarriage damage, it's really not that bad. But we gotta see what's going on with the engine here. Uh oh, I do see some oil already on the ground and it's just been here for one night. So that's not good. We're definitely, definitely leaking something. Okay, and five minutes later, Christian got it jacked up. We got the illuminator set up to really shine bright to see what's going on with this engine. I don't like the fact that there's already oil drips within one night of sitting and all the rocks in the exhaust, but so we're looking for signs that this car did a little off-roading when it shouldn't have. All right, jack stands going down. Moment of truth, okay. Got the exhaust back here. This all looks pretty good. Oh, look at the difference between a little Harbor Freight light and the illuminator. This thing is legit. Well, I feel like it's a good sign that we have the engine belly tray, okay. All right, while Christian's getting the creeper, I mean, there's the oil pan. Even that looks pretty decent. All right, let's find the block, see if there's a hole in it, if this engine blew up or not. All right, all the brakes, suspension looks good. Wow, all this looks super shiny and nice. I mean, it's a Texas car. All right, I'm not seeing anything so far. Why would they say do not start? Maybe it doesn't have coolant in it or something like that, I don't know. So, headers. Okay, these look pretty good. There's the block behind it. You know, this is a flat six, not a V6. So the block is much lower. So this whole, you know, engine case is right here, this side and then the other side. All right, that's looking pretty good. Oh boy, we definitely got some oil on the pan, but how's the other side looking? All right, we're good over there on that case half as well. All right, we've got a little damage right here to the under tray. So something clipped that corner right there. Not sure what, but it's not that bad. So clearly we got some oil coming from somewhere. It's not coming from the drain plug like our other boxsters. Oh snap, we got a little dent right here. Oh no, is that a crack? Oh geez, oh geez, here we go. Can you guys see that? It's dented in, dented upward. Oh no, right here. Okay, let's get a little, let's get a little closer. Oh. All right guys, so Clearly, we got a crack right there. Dang it, okay, 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 wait. This isn't all bad news. Does this oil pan come on and off, or is it part of the whole engine? Wait a second. Okay, we got all these bolts going around it. Okay, Christian, Google, 
Can you remove and replace just the oil pan on the engine? See if you can even buy the part. Clearly, whatever hit the car up there bounced back and hit the oil pan right here. Looks like a new pan is 600 bucks for aftermarket, a thousand bucks from Porsche. But then you gotta get a new pan gasket. Okay, a new new pan, thousand dollars from Porsche, or 600 bucks aftermarket? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this could be the best news yet. But, like I said guys, good and a bad thing. So good that we obviously found the issue here. Cool, maybe just the pan, but bad in that it probably already leaked out all the oil and guess what? You're probably wondering, was this car a run and drive or was it listed as non-running? It was listed as a run and drive, meaning for however many seconds or minutes this car was running with who knows how much oil. It could have been full and it all leaked out since then. It could still have five quarts in here. I don't know how active this leak is. That would be terrible if this thing has no oil and it was ran with no oil. But there's no way to prove any of that. You know, and there's no dipstick, so we don't even know how much oil is in this thing. I'm pretty sure you can only get the oil level. Christian, that's another thing to look up. Can you only get the oil level reading when it's running? Okay. And obviously, we're not going to run it to see how much oil's in it if there's no oil in it, right? Oh, gosh. All right, let me, let me scooch. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So cold outside. Crawling up on a... Okay, wow. It looks really good otherwise. Can you guys see this? And when they said don't start it, I mean, I was looking for a hole in the block. Yeah, all this looks really good. Oh, whatever hit the oil pan, I bet you hit right here, a little, little scuff right here. And I still don't know what's going on there. Why is there a hole in the floorboard? This does not make sense. No, look at that. That's supposed to be straight. Instead, that's bent. Whatever this lady, I think it's a lady because it smells like perfume in there. Whatever this lady ran over, it clearly started up front and then it ping-ponged across the whole bottom of this car and then punched a little crack hole in the oil pan. Remember this thing went off-roading. Dirt in the exhaust. No, the no. The thing did not go under the car. The car went over it. I think your theory is quickly extinguished because where's the dirt? If you go off-roading, your whole underside is absolutely caked in dust and dirt and there's mud and rocks all over the pans. Yet here, I don't see any of that. Look, listen, this would be full of rocks. This is so bizarre. What do you guys think happened? I think this cute little old lady was going out for a Sunday drive and then something was in the highway and just smacked the bottom of this car and put the hole here. And then, you know, whatever shop had this car clearly saw that damage, that damage, and they saw this and they're like, oh no, it probably like needs an engine. They could have quoted for like a new engine and all those components that probably added up really quick enough for it to be sent to auction by insurance. Especially if this thing went to a body shop, they're not gonna be messing around with an engine. As we've said a million times over, they're pretty quick to just total out a car and be done with it, sell it at auction, get the check and move on. Ouch, I just hit my elbow on the Ow, man, my funny bone, that's not funny. What do we do from here, Christian? I guess I'll clean this off fully where the crack is and then... Well, we can't get an oil reading because the oil is only red one minute after shutdown of a completely warm engine. You gotta be kidding me, that's stupid. It stores the last reading from when it was last ran. However, it's erased if the trunk has been open for more than 30 seconds. What a terrible design. So we have no clue how much oil is in this car. I mean, the fact that it is leaking oil, you know, the BMW drivers love to say that if it's leaking oil, that means it's got oil in it. <laughs> I mean, there is some truth to that. Clearly we have oil in here because it's all over my floor now. Oh my gosh. Hold up. I, I want to get to the back side of the pan to see if there's any last damage. This is so wild. I've never been this up close and personal with the with the Porsche engine. All right, I'm just checking out the front side of the oil pan, which you guys can see right there. There's absolutely no damage, which is really good. Every piece of the block looks good. The exhaust would obviously get hit first because that's below the block and there's no damage to that. So the only engine damage here is this crack in the oil pan. And we just pray to God that they had oil in it when it was running. And that if we go to add a little oil now, we can prove that the engine is good and then we can quickly take it over to our buddy's Porsche shop and they can throw on a new oil pan 
and we could be back in business for, like Christian said, 600 bucks plus a little bit of labor. It's not even that hard to take off 24 bolts and throw on a new one. So, so I guess the plan is to add uh, five or six quarts of cheap oil and then try to start it up for the first time and hope it's not knocking like crazy or already seized, blown up. Who knows? We have no idea. We're about to find out. Let's add this oil and give it a start. Okay, guys, when in doubt, JB Weld is your answer. We don't have time for JB Weld. This is Harbor Freight quick setting $2 <laughs> a pocket. Oh my gosh. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Will this work? I don't see how this could possibly hurt. Go faster and that stuff sets up and- Oh, sets quick? Five, okay, here, 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 give me more. More, more, more. All right, it's already setting, guys. Here we go. Let's cover this little side of the crack. Oh yeah, man. Dude, forget the oil pan. We're good. Seal this crack up. No one will ever know. New title, guys. Fixing my $10,000 problem with simple 50 cent repair. So here we were thinking we were gonna be doing an oil change when we first bought this car. This is more like an oil test. We're gonna throw this in and give the first start. The time has come. All right, this is gonna go one of two ways, guys. We're gonna add this oil, and we're gonna start the car, and it's gonna horribly knock, or it won't even turn on because it's already seized or something. Or, we're gonna add the oil, we're gonna turn it on, and it's gonna purr like a little kitten. Obviously, we're hoping for the latter. This is literally, I know I always say it like, oh, it's gonna be a huge home run or an epic fail. Like, no, this will be one or the other. The engine is either good, or it is bad, and this is the difference of making a huge profit or probably losing some, some serious dough. Boy, how exciting, you guys are seeing this real time. This car can take up to eight quarts, we're adding six. We're not sure if there's still any oil in it, but even if there's none, six quarts is plenty. It'll... What if there's three left in it? Okay, you make a good point, yeah. If there's three and we're adding six, then we're overfilling it. They always say overfilling can be just as bad as underfilling, though. Like, I'd um, rather be a quart under than a quart over. Five would put us three quarts short of what it should be. Comment down below, guys, before we get to the first start. Is this car gonna start up and run nicely, or is it going to blow up right here in our garage? So excited yet nervous. Please, Boxster. We've had really good luck with Boxsters. 987, 981, 986. This is such a nice car, PDK, 18,000 miles, it's worth a pretty penny. This would be a huge win if it just starts up perfectly. Wait guys, before we start it, let's see if it's leaking. Uh, oh, I think my JB well is holding. There's already three quarts in it and I don't see any leak. Huh. Okay, let me grab the Porsche key. Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Or maybe it's this one, no, that's that's 944. Is it this one? No, that's 987. Shoot, maybe it's maybe it's this one. No, it's 986. Or maybe it's this one. No, I don't know which one it is. Oh, it's this one. She's free, and we still have no oil leaking out of my hole. I kind of did it as a joke the whole JB Weld thing, but somehow it's holding. So one thing that hit me after I was about two quarts in filling the oil, we probably should have pulled the drain plug and just been sure that the thing was empty of oil and fill it with whatever is recommended. It might be a quart under, it might be two quarts under, could be a quart over. Probably not even the right weight oil anyway, but it doesn't matter, it's just whatever we had laying around to drive it over, you know, short drive over to the shop. If it starts, it's gonna be drained uh, immediately anyway. Okay, here we go. Either a $500 oil pan or a from the dealer, probably $20,000 engine or more. I don't know what they would charge, probably a small fortune. Okay, I think the battery's charged up enough. Oh gosh, oh my gosh. Are you ready? We said our prayers to the Porsche gods. You're gonna be glad I cleaned this windshield and rear window for you. Oh boy. You're about to be driving this thing to the shop. Yeah, guys, if this thing does work, I'm driving it right over to the Porsche shop. Uh, where they have a lift and can do the pan easily. Okay guys, will the $18,000 mystery damage 981 Boxster start? In three, two, one. Okay, okay. Uh, check engine light. Uh, okay, but at least it's running. Why is the check engine light on? Let's scan this code. It seems to be idling though. This is good, but it sounded a little, I heard quite a bit of valve train noise under there. I, I hope it was just getting oil to the, does that sound normal guys? I think a 
that sounds pretty good. You think that sounds normal? Sounds yeah. a little tinny. At least a good sign it's not seized. Are we leaking oil yet? I'll be darned, still not Read codes. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Camshaft position timing over advance. Uh. All right. Bank one and bank two. Well, let's just clear them and then we don't have to worry about them. Codes go away. All your problems just disappear. Ah, with a click of a button. Startup number two. Will the check engine light stay out? Three, two, one. All right, staying out. Pop on these headlights. Oh yeah, look at that. No warning lights. Let's try to drive it over to the shop. Reverse, make sure the transmission works. Yeah. Oh gosh. Can't believe this. $18,000 981. Just because it ran over something in the road. All right, let's give it a small little rev. All right, seems okay. <laughs> Dang, that radio's pretty good. Small little boxer, I guess those speakers really fill up this cabin. All right, we're moving. I can't quite tell if that is normal engine noise or not. Can you guys hear that? It just sounds a little tinny. It doesn't, I mean, then again, this is like the base engine, factory exhaust. So maybe that's normal. Oh yeah, there's our engine oil pressure. That's gonna be an important one if we have a blown engine or not. Looks like it's in the good range. Dang, that feels good. Adaptive headlights, super cool. Actually sounds pretty good. I think it has a valved exhaust. All right, so maybe I'm just hearing it when the valves are closed and it just sounds really tinny and crappy. Okay, so the car made it. Exotic Motor Works, these guys are Porsche experts. They love messing with new Porsches, old Porsches. They really do it all. Great job, great prices. So come here if you're in Scottsdale, they do great work. I didn't even check with them if it was okay to drop it off because I didn't really think we would get this far, but I'm sure they'll be able to take a look at it this week and then I'll update the vlog then. So it seems to be running okay. Um, it made it over here just fine. Oil pressure is good, engine temp, engine coolant, oil temp. I still don't see any oil drip, so I guess I'll turn it off and that's that. We'll call it a day. Boom. I can't believe it. This might be good to go and just need the oil pan. There's no telling you're the right girl, so I can only say that it feels right. feels right.